Hi, my name is Amber. I thought I would um, try this little tutorial, I hesitate to say tutorial, a little demo of this snowy scene. And I'm gonna be using this rough paper today. Um, so it kind of helps add to the whole effect. So, all right, let's get started. I have nothing planned in my head. I'm thinking we'll do something sort of like what I've already done on on my Instagram. So let's let's get this top half wet is what I'm gonna go through. So I just drew a wavy line and now faintly. And now I'm just gonna wash them the rest with water. This paper is Shizen paper. It's extremely textured. It usually doesn't love a lot of water. It'll leak under the tape because it has so much texture. It will just kind of go under and bleed. Oops, I did see it did not mean to do that. All right, let's just blend it in. We'll get a little bit of sky. And I often fly kind of by the seat of my pants on these kind of things. Although I will say YouTube is obviously very new to me. I'm still exploring how it'll work best for me and for you and if it will work best at all. Maybe my teaching, lack of teaching skills just aren't it, right? Maybe demos are not the thing. I don't know. I do see a lot of people doing demos. Um, I wouldn't say I have the best luck with them, but I, for some people, they must work, right? They must because people do them and they're out there and they get a lot of views. So I don't know. Maybe a mix. Maybe people can appreciate a mix. I guess that's what I'm trying to learn to appreciate is the mix of demos, tutorials, um, some, with, some with audio, some without, some, you know, I guess I'm just trying to find my way as well. So what I should have done is put this on a piece of plexi or cardboard or something. Um, I just happen to have this piece of plexiglass that I use for my stuff. So I'm gonna put it on here. And the reason I wanna do this is so that I can prop it and kind of manipulate what's gonna happen. And since obviously, you know, water color is full of water, you can kind of help it along here and make fun things happen for your sky without having to fidget with it. And then I take my cloth I try to use cloth as much as possible. I do have some tissue nearby, and sometimes tissue works really great for things like, say, taking a little bit of tissue, and say I just don't like that area right there. And I can just kind of tap it in, right? And I kind of eliminate that area. Um, I'm not an expert with clouds with this. I'm not an expert with anything, and I always say this. Uh, I just like to have fun, and I love watercolor, and I love sharing any kind of ideas and inspiration. So what I always say is if you hate something, that's actually helping you. Now you know not to do it for yourself, right? If you see something I do and you're like, oh my gosh, what is she doing? That's just not my thing. You've learned something. <laughs> I saved you the time of having to do it yourself. And be like, wow, that's not my, you know, it's not my style at all. And that's okay. So right now I'm just kind of taking colors. I'm taking a red, a pinkish, and they're all kind of mixing in with this. I have an indigo, a red, and a, I think that's like a rose. Um, and just kind of dropping them in, letting them mix up and seeing where that takes me. I'm not sure if I'll like it or anything, but again, I like to see where that takes me. And what I can also do is I can also take a squirt bottle, spray bottle, and I can just try, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter if you get over there, but try to keep it below that line. Only reason is because it'll start bleeding that way. And this will be our snow area. So ideally, you don't want it there, but I mean, it's not the end of the world if it gets there, it'll dry. And nature's not perfect. Neither is snow, neither is anything. So <laughs> if you get it there, not a big deal. I'm just soaking up any extra water that'll make a harsh line. I like the harsh lines personally, but I've been experimenting with not having them. And so if we want to keep this sky a little more sky-ish, right, than a blurred, I will take this tissue and just kind of let it soak up some of that color. I don't want to ruin the tree line per se, okay? So I still have the, the water drips kind of suggesting trees, right? So there's such, I'm gonna lay this flat now because I don't want it to do that anymore. I've sucked up the top part. I'm gonna also suck up, see that little collect, where it's collecting on the, on the line. Again, I don't hate those, but I'm just gonna, for the sake of this, I'm going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna suck those up. So that's what I'm doing. So I want a little bit like I said, I wanna leave bits that look like trees. I don't wanna manipulate it too much. I don't really wanna mess with it. I'm just gonna blot out this very top so it still looks like it, there's a sky. Okay, 
So sometimes helping, I'm standing up to look at this for a second. I'm standing up because sometimes that gives me perspective that I don't have when I'm right up on it. Okay, so I'm standing up looking through the camera to see what I see. And I see a space right here. I see white, right? And I don't necessarily white want that here. It's a little too abrasive. I like the fact that you can see lighter areas, but I didn't want necessarily that really white spot. Okay, so I was using my Mop Zero from Polina Bright. I'm switching to a liner brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get thicker paint. I'm gonna mix up a thicker indigo and a bit of the, I think that's Quinn Red. I'm pretty sure, no, it's um, it's not Quinn Red, I'm sorry. It's Crimson, Daniel Smith Pyro Crimson. So I'm gonna get a pretty thick, see it's a lot thicker over here, right here, than it is versus over here where it's very watery. See how that runs and this is much thicker. Um, it's more opaque, right? You can't see through the plate. Right here, you can definitely swim it around and such. So I'm gonna take this, now I'm just gonna, I'm literally gonna draw lines. I'm not gonna necessarily make trees. I'm gonna make a triangle shape in here, just every once in a while. Do one here, don't make them the same, same height. So this one's shorter. I'm gonna make this one shorter here. And then I'm gonna make this little over here and just hinting at them anywhere. Anywhere you want them. Some of them can just be the tops, right? I don't need to even finish that tree. Just stick another little top in there. I like to go for the areas where I'll have the most contrast make that a little taller. This one's definitely leaking out and that's okay. I'm gonna stand up again and look at it. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I have five, that's a good number. I could do a few more. Um, I might just do a little tiny one in this little whiter space. This lighter, whiter, whatever you wanna call it. Um, I'm gonna stand up again and look. Uh, okay, there's still a little light in there, but you know what, when I, I think I'll end up putting a tree in there, I think. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take white gouache. I happen to have one of my favorites and I always talk about it. Um, use it pretty extensively, Dr. P.H. Martin's Weed Proof White. It is a white gouache, so if you have a white gouache, you can use that as well. This, I just, I really, really use a lot and just love. I'm not gonna use my liner and I'm not gonna use my mop for this. I'm gonna grab something smaller because I don't want this to get out of control too fast. And I wouldn't say it can, but Sometimes I get a little crazy with my my splatters and make big, <laughs> big old ones. What I'm looking for is a size this, size four. Size four round. And I'm just gonna dip it in here and I'm going to splatter lightly. I didn't put a ton of water. I just wet my brush, wetting it a little more. There we go. That's just what I was looking for. See that little bit? You might not even see much, but with this paint still wet and with this paint a little wet, it'll kind of do a really pretty sprawling out thing. Hopefully. We shall see. So after a quick dry, you can see things that really have started to kind of absorb back into the paper, right? Not back in the paper, but they've absorbed into the paper. And they've kind of, I would say blend in, blended in more, and that's kind of what we want, right? Um, of course, it's always pretty when you first see all the colors and you're like, oh, okay, so that was too much. Now what I'm gonna do is get some snow. And I think purple's a great color to do that with, so is blue. I'm gonna pick up a little tiny bit of that blue. Probably too much, so if I feel like there's too much and I'm going to go for a really light, I'll just kind of dab off and see what that does. And still too much, so I'm gonna dab off, get some more water, clean my brush, and just kind of play with it. I'm not going for anything uh, particular. This paper is so rough that it kind of does its own thing for me. Uh, so I don't really have to try to worry about making snow, right? So I feel like that's okay. I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, also gonna dry this layer real quick. And I do have a heat tool for that, which you saw me use before. So I'm gonna use a my, my liner for these. I encourage you to play with all sorts of brushes for your trees. Um, trees are tricky. Trees are probably one of my most like known nemesis. <laughs> and it sounds like from everybody else that's kind of the same. Um, a lot of people I feel struggle with trees. It seems to be a very common thing. The less I think, the better I do. I go for the triangle shape. I do make the line down the middle. That's what I'm most comfortable with. You obviously don't have to. Um, and I just start going back and forth on each side in a very random pattern. 
<laughs> random pattern. Isn't that funny when people say that? Random pattern. And I just hope, honestly, I just hope that it resembles a tree in some sort. Trees are imperfect, nature's imperfect. So luckily, that's kind of on our side, right? Nothing's gonna be perfect. It doesn't have to be. That one's bendy and that's okay. And I'm just gonna go back and forth with my brush and let it kind of flop around and let it just do that and be okay with it. This one's fat, this one's skinny, this one's different. They're all three different so far and that's okay. It's all practice too. So I'm getting in good practice. I'm going from side to side. I'm kind of letting my brush just do the work as I like kind of tap dance back and forth. Kind of hope that there'll be like little points on the outside versus a blob. Doesn't always work that way. I think just, you know, after doing thousands of trees and I'm not kidding, thousands of trees, it just, you you find what works for you. It's not probably gonna be the way that they, they do in the tutorials, which I did so many tutorials. I don't know, 25, 30, maybe more tutorials on trees. And while none of them helped me exactly, I think putting all those bits together and finding out what worked for me ended up being the key. So I ended up finding the combination, right, of listening to what other people said working for me. And the fact that I really, really do um, encourage you to use every different brush that you have. Some brushes will, you'll find will work for you and some won't. The one that somebody said that works perfect for them, you'll absolutely hate, right? So you just never know. All right, I'm just trying to fill in, not fill in, but I'm trying to help this background have some layers, right, some depth. Um, often you'll see trees and they'll just be tons of them back to back and they look amazing, but that's a lot harder to do in watercolor for me anyway, than it looks. So this is the way I think I like to do these. And this kind of initially started with um, obviously seeing other people's tutorials, right? Ellen Cremini does an amazing tutorial. She does quite a few on this. Well, actually I just know of one, but she, I mean, she has quite a few tutorials, but the one I'm thinking of, it's a green tree, Christmas tree background and it's perfect. And, and it has this, this. So if you like this kind of thing, and I didn't actually watch the tutorial fully, so she might go over the perfect way to make a tree and I need to watch it. So I will watch it. Um, Ellen Carmini Trent, I'll tag her in the, in the comments, but this is, um, her trees are a little more detailed and they're nice. They're very nice. But that's okay. Your trees don't have to look like mine or hers or anybody else's. So the idea, again, I'm going to stand up and look, um, uh, I kind of like the layer thing going on, uh, as they get closer, they usually get bigger. Mine got smaller. That's okay. It's practice. It's okay. <laughs> right? I'm going to dry this again. Okay, so what I'm doing now, I'm mixing up some of the crimson and the indigo to get even a darker color. So I'm going to use more indigo in this one than I have been. I'm going to try to keep it thick. I'm going to stop adding more water. And I'm taking a dagger. This is a dagger brush, a quarter inch brush. Um, and it's a fun one to play with. Again, just because I like it doesn't mean you will, but maybe, you never know. So see, I'm overthinking this. Let's just go somewhere and stick a tree. Let's just stick one dab smack in the middle. Maybe the middle's not the best choice, right? I have a little too much paint on there. So be mindful of that. And I'm just gonna go back and forth, back and forth with my dagger. Dagger does have nice a nice helps you with the loose. It just has a nice like flop to it, <laughs> for lack of a better word. It's very soft. All right, um, there's one. Let's put another friend near it. Let's go right here. So it kind of helps make that one in the middle make sense a little bit maybe. And this one I'm gonna not get as large. Try to keep them different sizes. No trees are the same in nature anyway, right? They're all a little different. So there we go. Now let's do maybe a littler one back here, just off to the side. Make sure my, the tape will come up a little bit with the heat gun sometimes. So you may wanna be mindful of that. All right, there's another one over there. Let's get my little more, mix up a little more paint here and we'll maybe put one right here. I can tell I already have a little too much paint on there. And we're just letting the brush kind of flop back and forth as I tap, tap. So all I'm doing is tapping kind of back and forth. It's like a little dance that has no rhyme or reason. <laughs> really, it really is. It doesn't have any kind of rhyme or reason. Okay, so I have four. I'm not a fan of that number. So I'm gonna put in another one right here. 
I think my kids think they're playing doorbell ditch. I'm not entirely sure. They probably read about it in some book and now they're doing it. Sometimes our door sticks so they think they can't get in. Sometimes I lock it so they can't get in. <laughs> Sorry, insert evil laugh, which wait, I already did it. So no inserting at all. All right, now let's take, um, I think I'll just use a little, no, I'll use a bigger one. I'll use my round. I'm just gonna get it wet, dry it off a little bit and just kind of let these, let those trees do their bleeding thing and uh, create their own shadows a little bit. That one already dried, so I will add a little bit of more paint just there and use the wet. Uh, I previously, when I just brushed it, it, has a little bit of water left, so. And then we'll just uh, give that one a little bit of shadow too. And your shadows don't need to be perfect. Just put them there, right? You can worry about light source and stuff later. This is all just practice. People get very particular about light sources, but you know what? Yeah, it's practice. It doesn't need to be perfect. I do feel like it's very white back there. Should we maybe touch some purple back there? It is snow though, so maybe we'll leave it white. Let's just pick that up a little bit. Maybe we'll just drop in a little bit. All right, stand up and look again. Sorry for that wobble. Mm, it's looking very stuck, right? <laughs> There's no movement in this, that's okay. Forest can be very still and so can snowy weather, so we'll dry this and see. I'm going to bring back my bleed proof Dr. Martin white. I'm going to get it pretty wet. I just do it inside. You, if you don't like to get it, you know, extra water, you can use the lid, but I like to use the, the side and then I just kind of wipe off the excess because it can get kind of watery. And you know, the worst thing, you don't want these giant blobs. I know people tap on backs of uh, brushes and all that kind of stuff. I tend to just tap with my hand. Sometimes I just tap in the middle. Sometimes if I need a little extra, I'll tap pretty hard. Yeah, it looks like I might've got too much. No, I didn't get enough. So there's a little like balance, right? You kind of want to play with it until you get just the right amount on there. Then you can go for a good second or two or three or four, you know. Um, and then sometimes you do want some bigger ones. So I'm going to grab a little more. Hopefully that's not too much. Yikes. Let's see. Okay. No, that definitely did not go too much. So I still want kind of some bigger ones. Oh, that was way too much. Okay. This is going to be bigger. I can tell. Hopefully land where I want them. All right, well, okay. So today we end up with a fine mist, that's okay. You could manually go in and add snow if you wanted to. You could dust the trees with actual, you know, you could go in there and do the snow. All right, not 100% not dry, but we're gonna go ahead and remove the tape so we can get it off of here. Um, and yes, I do reuse my tape. I get a lot of questions about that. Totally 100% and completely reuse it. I hate to waste and it just seems like such a waste. So what I do is I just take it off and then off to the side of my table, I just stick it right on my table and use it next time. So here we are, let's go there. A nice and simple um, little snow scene. That should be pretty quick between the drying time. The heat gun really does help help that process speed up much faster. And you could do any colors. You could do cool greens and blues. You could do all blues. You can do a much darker night scene. You could do a sunset scene with oranges and reds and pinks and purples. And you don't have to do the snow. This could just go a million different ways. And so I hope you enjoy this and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.